Well, no cash, no credit card, no problem. Maybe you've heard about the digital currency called Bitcoin. You'll be seeing it used and accepted more around the Tampa Bay area slowly. Fox 13's Vanessa Roof has found out why more businesses are beginning to check it out. Paying with the swipe of a credit card is pretty convenient, but what about the tap of a finger? That's the promise of buying with bitcoins. Bitcoin is a currency for the internet. And just like an email, you can send an email from here to China just as easily as you can send it from here to someone in the same room. Bitcoin lets you do the same thing with money. Friday, executives from the company BitPay met with local business owners to explain the system and its benefits. The Atlanta-based company just opened an office in St. Petersburg, hoping to make the city a hub for the Bitcoin. There's a lot of uh, defense, aerospace, medical industry, software development here. So it's a it's a city that has a lot of high tech and Bitcoin is the next I think big high tech industry. Berg's Green Bench Brewery and Center Plate in Raymond James Stadium are already accepting the payment and soon other businesses will too. It's simple. It's an internet system. It manages uh, flows completely easily with our property management system. So our accounting department's happy. Front desk is happy. BitPay says since bitcoins are not dependent on any bank, government or corporation, transaction fees and currency exchange fees are lower than other payments. And for consumers, well, it's a much more secure way of making payments. Uh, you know, the only way somebody can you know, use your account is if they actually get physically get hold of your device and know your password. And would you like your receipt in the bag? Some businesses still aren't sold. For right now, until it has widespread usage, it just doesn't seem to make sense for us as a tender type to accept. But local business leaders say widespread usage might be a lot sooner than you think. In St. Petersburg, Vanessa Rufus, Fox 13 News. The St. Petersburg Museum of History and the Dali Museum are also accepting bitcoins now. BitPay says it's looking into installing bitcoin ATMs around St. Pete where folks can buy bitcoins or sell them for dollars. New to 11, the online currency known as bitcoins has a checkered past often used by drug dealers and even human traffickers. But despite the issues, bitcoins are gaining popularity across the globe. So uh, how do you know who would accept them or how to even earn a Bitcoin? And if so, do you know the risks? TV5's Gino Vici breaks it down in this I-Team report. I saw it basically explode in popularity online. Meet Andrew Kuntz. He's a recent Central Michigan grad. So you could say he's a Chippewa or a chip. But it's a different kind of chip that's got him excited. A virtual chip, that is. April of last year. The price went from about $10 to 220 Coots is talking about a Bitcoin. As the I-Team discovered, Bitcoins are sort of an underground economy, a so-called decentralized form of virtual currency. They can be transferred online from person to person in what's called a virtual wallet. You could send somebody a billion dollars across the world. It could be on completely opposite sides of the world, and it wouldn't cost you a thing. That's right. In an instant, you can send Bitcoins to anyone, anywhere with no banking requirements. So how do you earn them? Well, you can flat out pay cash for them or you can work for them. It's built specifically for mining Bitcoins. I've got four graphics cards and they're the, these are actually doing the processing work. Mining as in mining for gold, but in computer terms, mining on a network. This is a node on the network that is helping process transactions. Bitcoin users like Coots can lend the Bitcoin network processing speed from his computer setup you see here. The more processing speed he can lend, the more Bitcoins he can earn. This concept is known as Bitcoin mining. And I decided to sell those for the quick money I needed. That's because here in Michigan, it's hard to spend a Bitcoin without exchanging them for cash. And only a handful of establishments have decided to gamble with the online currency. It took me a while to understand it. Leonard Mazzola is the owner of the Bronx Deli in Farmington Hills. But once I understood it, um, I thought it was pretty amazing. What's more amazing, Mazzola says, customers are driving very long distances to spend their bitcoins at his restaurant. When Coots learned the Bronx Deli accepted bitcoin, he decided to follow me to my interview with Mazzola. He drove nearly 40 miles from downtown Detroit for lunch. I'm, I'm ecstatic. I mean, now I've... I got somewhere I can actually spend it now, and, and there's a Bitcoin ATM, which is amazing. I mean. Sitting at the table behind Coots, 
another Bitcoin spender. Hey, we're all great. So I had to get in on the fun myself. So I bought about $20 worth of Bitcoins, which is the equivalent to 0 0.025 Bitcoins. And I made my first purchase. It was easy and super fast. It's been paid. Mazzola hopes Bitcoin transactions become an even bigger part of his business. I love to cut out Visa and MasterCard at some point altogether. Could Bitcoin really one day replace carrying around a wallet full of credit cards and cash? Well, some experts say it's unlikely. So the real question is, you know, can it act like a currency if it's not a stable store of value. Dr. Tim Nash is an economics professor at Northwood University. He says bitcoins as a currency have a lot to prove. Just last year, the price of one bitcoin, about $200. The price today, more than $600. Nash says the return may seem high, but so is the risk. I'm not uh, willing to, uh, to, to uh, uh, invest in or take risk in at this point. Despite the constant criticism the currency has attracted, companies like Dell and even the electric car company Tesla Motors have decided to accept Bitcoins, and the Sacramento Kings became the first professional sports team to accept them. In the past month or so, the U.S. Senate held special hearings on Bitcoins. The Michigan Attorney General's Office issued a statement warning consumers to educate themselves about the currency before using them to buy and sell items. But for Bitcoin enthusiasts like Coots and Mazzola, they say they've done their homework. They understand the risks and say they're looking forward to the day everyone has a Bitcoin in a virtual wallet. I mean, if it's working for them and it's working around the world, why can't it work for everybody? It's done nothing but open up new avenues, new customers for me. It's exciting to be a part of it. With this IT report, Gino Vici, WNEM, TV5. There are 13 million Bitcoin currently in circulation, but the creators say only 21 million will ever be made available. That creator, by the way, continues to remain anonymous. Venezuela is moving to cryptocurrencies. As CNBC reports, as the national currency Bolivar suffers under the hyperinflation, people are turning to Bitcoin rather than their national currency. People are using Bitcoin even for daily necessities such as food, baby diapers, and medicine. Due to the hyperinflation, the electricity now is cheaper and many have taken to Bitcoin mining in a bid to survive. A Venezuelan who can run several Bitcoin mining devices can get about $500 and this is counting as a good number for a family for a month. However, law enforcement authorities cracking down such operations. Although there is no cryptocurrency law, police are arresting miners. 